A brief reading of the Mishnah, an ancient 1900-year-old Jewish book on the requirements for festivals like Passover, will support this understanding. Next, God teaches us about the second part of his mark upon his people. This mark is also on the hand and forehead. And what is that? It is the keeping of God's commandments. Again, notice the location of the mark. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house. As you can see, keeping God's commandments with the seventh-day Sabbath commandment marks the believer on the hand and between the eyes, the seventh-day commandment being the only one of the ten which, when kept, can readily be observed by another. Please remember this, as this is an important clue for you. Exodus 31, 13-14 tells us, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So the keeping of the things that God commanded his people to do is what mark his people as having God's mark on their hand or forehead. The Feast of Unleavened Bread with Passover where God's Son did his savings work at the cross and the seventh day Sabbath that honors God in Christ as Creator. So the mark of God is keeping of God's commanded festivals that a person must obey and believe with the mind and do with the hand. And those public acts mark you as belonging to God. All right, the beast mark. The beast also marks men on their hands and forehead. Revelation thirteen sixteen. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Please consider if it's, if it's possible that since the location of God's mark is on the hand or forehead, and since the location of the mark of the beast is also on the hand, our forehead. Is it possible that the beast's mark, like God's mark, are both of them keeping of special days that publicly demonstrate the religious affiliation of a believer? Think about that. So making Satan's days God's days. A lot of people tell me they do this. They can they can pray for cathedrals or old pagan cathedrals and turn them into God's churches. They can pray for for days, God, the old pagan days, and make them into God's. But can they? A corporate church says they have taken Satan's days and made them Christian, but Scripture gives them no such authority. Those pagan holidays belong to Satan in the beginning, and they still belong to Satan. Remember, even Michael the Archangel does not outrank Satan. Michael had to ask God to rebuke Satan. He could not do it himself. Who, other than Christ in the church, outranks Michael the Archangel? Read Jude 1 through 9 see, and see what Michael, see what it says about Michael and Satan. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So why not keep the days that mark you for God, friends, and let Satan have his days? Uh, now we need to look at the beast. With that in mind, let's look at the beast. Let, let's ask, who, who was the beast's power in Christ's day? Well, everybody knows who that is. That's Rome, the, the Roman Empire. Consider that Pilate killed Christ. He was Roman, and Rome was a very religious empire with hundreds of gods, but only a few special gods stand out as being the most important. The first in importance in, in the Roman gods was the sun god. That was declared to be the god of the Roman Empire by Emperor Constantine in the year 275 AD. You see, 30 years before he said he'd become Christian. He's declaring the sun to be the god of the Roman Empire. And shortly after the day of the sun, and shortly after the day of the sun god was forced by law upon the entire church. Uh, in 331 CE, while he was a pagan sun worshiper, this is a quote, the Emperor Constantine declared that Sunday was to be a day of rest throughout the Roman Empire. And he said, On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. Sunday was the Sabbath, a Roman sun god Sabbath. 
This keeping of the sun Sabbath on Sunday marked a person as belonging to the worship of the sun. It was Roman law and had real teeth, and those who refused to keep it soon found that out. And next, let's go line by line and insert some real history, because contrary to traditional teaching, the mark of the beast has already been set up long ago. The mark of the beast. First Revelation's beast is a composite beast. Anyone reading about Daniel's four beasts will understand who this beast is. And uh, that's Daniel chapter 7. One of the angels sent to interpret Daniel's beast dream tells Daniel, these four beasts are four worldwide empires, one following the other. And those series of beasts rising from the sea, starting with Babylon and ending with the empire of Rome, in, in a, a form we don't yet recognize, which we will go into, uh, when we count the horns and the, and the heads in those four beasts, we get the exact number of horns and heads uh, of, of Revelation's first sea beast, seven heads and ten horns. We don't have time or space to do a study on that now, but if, if possible, we'll do one later. Next, God gives witness to the image of this first beast. What is an image? An image looks like a thing it is patterned after. This image has two horns of his own. Horns don't it empires. For example, Nebuchadnezzar was called the king of kings, Daniel 2.37. A king of kings is an emperor. Revelation continues, Revelation 13.11-17. through 17. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Notice that the two-horn empire pretended to be the lamb, but it is Satan who speaks out of his mouth. So they will look very much like Christians, but will really be the visible image of Satan on earth. Revelation 13, 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. This image of Rome has been given all of Rome's power to use as it wants. The living image of Rome causes men to worship Rome, something all of the early emperors failed to do. All of them tried to get the Christians to worship the empire and, and the emperor. And then no matter what they did, by force, they killed them, they burnt them, they fed them to lions, nothing worked. Now Constantine came, claims to be Christian, and now they worship the empire and the emperor. Remember, they killed the Christians and all those who refused to worship the empire in many horrible ways in the Colosseum. But the image of the beast using the deception of looking like a lamb looks like the body of Christ did bring emperor worship, did bring emperor worship about by the force of Roman law in 325 A.D. Later, the image does great wonders, even making fire fall from the, from the sky to convince and deceive people into believing that the images are real. We are the body of Christ, they say, and the fire is the miracle that proves it. The sun spinning and falling from the sky was prophesied beforehand by a, dis by a seductive spirit creature. It is called the miracle of Fatima and can be read about by going to 